the shittiest way. Hey there friends, today I'm going to show you guys an excellent trick that makes use of everybody's favorite appendage. That's right, the foot. That's right, so all you foot fetishists are going to have a field day with this one because it's a great trick to do. You have a card, it involves your feet, maybe it involves the spectator's hand touching a card that's been near your feet. So you foot fetishists, I'm sure, are going to be just... So we're going to be taking our uh, deck of cards. Now here, the uh, participant is going to mix and shuffle the deck. This isn't one of these tricks that involves a deck of cards that's in any sort of order whatsoever. And here, all I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to take, uh, in this case, a, a playing card like this, this card right here, and I'm going to put it underneath my foot. So we're going to be taking this card and placing it underneath my foot just for protection. Look at that powerful foot. Now the spectator at this point is asked to name any card in a 53 card deck of playing cards much like this. And let's say they say the three of spades. You go, hmm, you see, I was trying to get you there. I was trying to get you a little bit of reverse psychology because uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I said 53 card deck. And uh, I was doing that because I wanted you to name the Joker, because it places in your subconscious. I say 53 card deck, you go, wait a second, it's a 54 card deck, what's the two additional cards? The Joker, I'm gonna get him. But I knew that you were probably gonna avoid that. And I knew that you were probably gonna go for a low card. Which is why before we started, I actually placed the card right here underneath my foot my friend. And there's one card that's been there all the while. There isn't like I'm stepping on an entire deck. And would you believe it? It's the three of spades. Oh yeah, look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So all we're doing is combining a little bit of classic card manipulation with a little bit of sleight of hand. It's all it is, my friends. A lot of psychology. And you could learn all of this on the Pig Cake Magic Academy. That's right, look at the Pig Cake Magic Academy. $5 a month gets you access to over a thousand videos. I know the competition is ramping up, my friends. Everybody has a magic subscription service. So why should you join the Pig Cake Magic Academy? Well, look at the catalog that you get access to. And it's not like it's rinkity dinkity videos. I mean, granted, yes, my production quality is not the best at times, but the content, the content is there, my friends. Thousands of videos. If you pay $5 a month, you get access to pretty much most of it. You don't get access to the Mentalism Academy. That's $10 a month. That's like two White Claws in most college bar cities. But for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to the Piggybacker videos. What? That's tremendous. That's a wonderful value and definitely one that should be a point made in marketing classes as to what you should not do. But I still do it because I want to provide a value to my pig, pig community, my pig community. So go ahead, join the Pig Cake Magic Academy, $5 a month, it's such a bargain. And you get two additional videos on the actual Academy side every week. You get two additional piggybacker videos every single week. So it's four videos every single week. The link is in the description section below. So this actually comes from the card manipulation world. See, I've seen a production where you have some cards in a palm. This could be a Tenkai palm. This could be a, a full gator grip palm. Uh, one of these that makes it look like, well, you've only been in magic for maybe 14 seconds. And I've seen people produce cards from their feet like this, right? You would have a little production that way. So I thought, what a great way to produce a single playing card right? You're essentially swiping up the card and it's a little bit of a flourish, but it's also a way to palm a card and seemingly have it underneath your foot. So first things first is going to be how you vanish the card underneath your foot. And that's just a rub-a-dub vanish. Look at the technique on this, boys. You're pushing the card forward and you're pulling it back. That's it. That's the technique, right? But under the cover of your foot, let's say this is your little foot right here, it just looks like you're placing that card there. You see that? All I'm doing is just pushing it back and that's it. That's the technique. There's not really much, right? You could just see that and see me do it over and over again and get an impression as to what you have to do. But that's it. Look at that. So your foot's there and you're just placing a card apparently underneath your foot and that's the technique to vanish the card. So there's nothing underneath your foot. Now there will be something in your mouth if you're a fan of feet later, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> My foot in your mouth. <laughs> so you start off by saying, oh, I'm just going to 
take something here real quick. Ah, I'll tell you what, that one looks good. And uh, I'm just going to place this underneath my foot. Then you go and you place that card apparently underneath your foot, but really you're just pulling a card back. So they think there's a card under your foot. There isn't a card under your foot. And here you're going to tell the participant you want them to name any card out loud in a 53 card deck. Now, the reason you're doing this is because you're gonna to try to gear them towards the Joker. Now, at this point, you have cut the Joker to the face of the deck, so you can make a, a use of this, and you could say, ha ha, clever, I thought you were gonna say it, and I knew you were gonna say it, which is why I put it in the face here. And you could uh, make uh, the spectator feel insignificant by pointing out the fact that you were in their head uh, from the get-go. It's a classic old force where you're having them think of a card from a 53 card deck. The fact that you say 53 card deck puts the Joker in their mind. But most of the time, they might not say it because there are other cards and uh, you're just going to point out the ruse. So you're going to say, haha, I was trying to get you to name the Joker, which is going to be your excuse for looking through the deck and cutting whatever card they named to the top. That's it. So in this case, let's say they named the King of Hearts. Uh, you go, ah, you see, I was trying to get you. I was trying to get you. And I'm just going to go find a king and cut it to the top as I now go through the deck and pull out the Joker. And I say, I was trying to get you to name the Joker, because I said 53 card deck, 53, that puts the Joker in your mind. So at that point, you could just bring out the ruse and just tell them that uh, you were trying to get them to think of the Joker. And at this point, you remind the spectator, the participant, that you have a card underneath your foot. You just had it there the entire time. And remember, you actually have their card now on top of the deck. Now, you don't have to get their card to the top this way. You could do it in whatever way you want. If you want to call the card because you're familiar with magic virgin techniques, well then, my friend, you could just call the card. It's up to you. It's your prerogative. But ultimately, their card ends up on top of the deck, ready to be palmed. So at this point, you're going to do whatever palm you want. I like the one-handed top palm because it puts me in a nice position. And you're going to do it under heavy misdirection anyways, because the deck is going to be placed to the side like this, as all the attention is on the foot, apparently with the playing card. So all I'm going to be doing with my right foot is this right here. That's all I'm going to be doing. And apparently taking the card from underneath it. So it's going to look like I'm just swiping the card and catching it in a flourish. But I'm going to do that with a card that's pumped. So all that's going to happen here in slow motion is this. I'm palming that card. I'm lifting my foot. I'm apparently taking that card from underneath my foot. And now I'm holding that card in my hand. So it just looks like that's the card that's been under my foot. And I've done it in a flourishy fashion. So at speed, it should just look like this just like this. And I have one card that I tell the spectator, remember, I've had a card underneath my foot the entire time. You could have named any card. And of course, that's the card that's underneath my foot. You could also do it with the other foot. So you could just do it like this with the other foot behind your back. That's all you're doing. But all essentially that's happening is you have a card that's palmed and you're apparently producing it from your foot, but it's not there. That's it. That's magic. It's not that difficult. So that's the trick. It's an easy one. All you're doing is just palming a card and producing it from underneath your foot. That's essentially it. You could find any way that you want to do this. If you want to use your favorite palm, like the uh, the uh, the gator grip, the um, this is a nice palm right here, right? It's a very natural looking palm, especially if your parents gave you thalidomide as a child. So I would suggest uh, using your favorite palm. But thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate you. I appreciate everything you guys have done, including watching the video, including liking the video, including subscribing if you haven't already.